So we will discuss the following topics. Namely, gravitational descendants and diffeomorphisms of the target space. Because here, here I have something new to say. Second topic would be a n singularity case. And so-called n reduced AP hierarchy. Point number three would be called tensor product and when I say tensor product it will be an explanation how to get how to get complicated formulas from a simple one. You see, <clears throat> here I need to make a comment. There's a product of theories, of course. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Here I want to make some emotional comment. Mm -hmm. Emotional, you see? Because mathematics has no emotion, but people do. Okay? When uh, people talk, think about tensor product, they basically see, oh, it's a very natural structure, after people understand. You take object and you get uh, something uh, that is as uh, complicated as uh, the thing that you multiply, okay? So you have vector space, you have matrices, so what? The complexity is not growing. However, we, and in the same way, we will do tensor product of theories. However, we will see something surprising and interesting. And interesting thing is that using the tensor product, we would be able, surprisingly, to get something very non-trivial from basically polynomials. We say if you have a product, you have two multipliers. Just imagine that you start multiplying, that is a polynomial, another multiplier, that is a polynomial. You multiply and you get, say, elliptic function. Hmm? Isn't it interesting? Or you have one multiplier that is basically exponent. Another multiplier, also basically exponent. You multiply and you get some special function uh, that I that I don't know, okay? Mm -hmm. Interesting, yes. Mm -hmm. um, or in the example that we studied with a dong, hmm? you take a uh, multiplier. That is a well-known chiral fermion in, the, in complex dimension one. You take another thing, you multiply an OPA, you are getting a higher holomorphic series. Hmm? Interesting. Hmm? Of course, there is no mystery. And you see, in commenting the point three, I would say that people already found this 
mysterious, uh, not mysterious, but sorry, they, they are not mysterious. Interesting. Um, interesting property of the tensor product. Let me recall that uh, the very issue of mirror symmetry started when people consider tensor product of five minimal models that were not like polynomials. They are something more complicated, but, but as a result, you get uh, the Calabi Yao Quintic. Hmm? So, would you be a pure mathematician? Okay, pure mathematician would say, I am not interested in all that mathematical physics stuff. I am interested in motives. Okay. So according to the idea of motives, you may decompose uh, the main object that are manifolds into, you see, I'm sorry for, for slang of physicists, into quarks. And these quarks and algebraic geometry are called motives. But since they're French, French, maybe it's better to call them motifs. Okay, motifs. And if you have these motifs, then how are you making uh, a manifold? You are doing the standard product. Okay. <laughs> You see, it looks as, as uh, uh, the author of Tensor Product paid me something, okay? <laughs> so I'm advertising him in a quite aggressive way. Okay, he, he was not paying, but paid me, but I spent some time doing this Tensor Product. So, so it is me in the past who tells, who says, you should tell people about Tensor Product. It's not that uh, silly, yes? It's an interesting non-trivial structure, okay? You should not exclude it from the talk. And also, <clears throat> there are tensor product conjectures that uh, I have not proved because they are hard. But I, with my friend Igor Polubin, spent some time making computations, proving them in the lowest order. Okay. And this is because in constructing solutions to what I call WDVV type equations, or you may call them infinity equations. You always have, da have data of linear algebra. And when you have data of linear algebra, you naturally have a tensor product. So it induces tensor product on the rest. Okay? Okay. So this is my plan for today. Hmm? So I will start with the first point. And this first point is about gravitational descendants. And here I will also, uh, okay, so today I will mention Igor Polubin because we wrote a paper on this also with Igor Polubin. Okay, so now I see. Okay. <clears throat> so I will call it this way, target space, meaning of gravity. 
gravitational descent. We discuss, we discuss gravitational descendants, and then we know that in, a, in an example. Andrei, we're out of focus. Ah, uh -huh. out of focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, now we're in focus back. It's sort of all over the place. Yeah, okay, now Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So please say loudly, out of focus, or just say ah. And I understand that it's out of focus. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so we define the gravitational descendant and after we define the gravitational descendant we may think, okay, we know how to compute them, but what would happen if I take two observable heuristically arist something like this, O A M, integrated over Riemann surface and added to action what would it what would it give you may think that it would mean just just a deformation However, this deformation is not written in terms of the target space structure. It is written in terms of the world sheet structure. Because this M stands for uh, first chain class of the line bundle. Wait, when you look at the target, you don't see any the, the line a? bundle. What's the little a? Type of O. Mm -hmm. So when when a so so what so what the, what this should mean and uh, what is interesting is that they have geometrical meaning. So changing uh, action by this could be reinterpreted in terms of deformed geometrical action on the target. Mm -hmm. And it's a discovery that I made in 90s. And uh, there was a paper with Parubin that are called something like gravitational descendants as generators of diffeomorphism. So what, so what actually happens? <clears throat> Let's consider so-called AM case as an example. You see, I will start with a with the with example right now, and then I'll speculate how this should be generalized. Okay. So the theory starts with superpotential that is x to the m. Then people say that there are observables. Observables are polynomials of, of x. Okay. So before I say this. I need to say the theory is defined not only by W, but also by the top form. It will be dx. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so, and, and the, so then, uh, yes. Um, so, sorry for a silly question, but why why is this uh, form of uh, superpotential called an? Um, and what, yeah, what's the relation to the Lie algebra? Let me. Yes. So, so it it actually has relation not to the Lie algebra, but to a Dinkin diagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 actually, it is because, as far as I remember, uh, because of the Coxter rule. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let me let me see how people used to think. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to, you know, Pasha, it's, it's a good question. It's a good question. I, I, I need to, I, I need to recall, you see, I, yeah, the, 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 I, I'm afraid that I'll say something wrong. That, that's okay, thank you. No, if there's no direct link to the algebra, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. No. It, it has direct link to the Coxter diagram mm -hmm. and uh, to the Dinkin diagram. And actually this N, this N uh, corresponds to the number of, uh, to the dimension of Jacobi, uh, of Jacobi ring. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's my fault. So, so I think that next time uh, in an appendix, mm -hmm. huh, I'll, uh, I'll explain this. Mm -hmm. But I need to recall. Uh, mm -hmm. So actually, that I think I, can, I cannot say conjecture because it's a well-known fact. But I just forget. Uh, so the the A N comes uh, from the fact that uh, there are cycles, vanishing cycles, because that, that correspond to this singularity. And there is intersection uh, uh, pairing between these cycles, and uh, it forms uh, the Dinkin diagram of A N type. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's a, it, because uh, so you may ask what kind what kind of singularity. I'm talking about. Of course, I'm talking of singularity. So consider the surface. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it has cycles. Uh, the surface is degenerate. Also, all cycles collapse. So I can uh, deform it a bit. And here I see the cycles, and uh, I, I may consider uh, intersection of this. I think of vanishing cycles, mm -hmm. and uh, as far as I remember, it's intersection of vanishing cycles uh, that are links on the Dinkin diagram. But I need to recall, mm -hmm. so absolutely not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so However, please, please. yes. So uh, you have uh, operators from the word sheet in the boundary associated to a boundary. So then you consider its meaning in the target space. One second. Here I am answering the Pavel's question. So Pavel asked a good question. Mm -hmm. Pavel asked about uh, YAM. What kind of metric do I have? Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, there is another metric associated to this problem. And this metric, I think, coincides with the residue pairing that Kyoji Saito described. Yes? 
But for me, it was more instructive to present it as higher residue pairing. However, and it's a good point, I need to explain why QGSIETA pairing and, uh, and metric on the intersection cycles are related. And this I will do in, I will say, in the appendix, okay? I, I need to recall it for some time. Mm -hmm. I do not, I do not have, have it as the active piece of my brain. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because I never used it. And, uh, and, uh, and it is because it is not uh, directly related to other stuff of the B model. So what is the OI here? Sorry. Okay, so I am I'm trying to do it. So consider a theory. W is x to the n. Omega top is dx. Now, what are observables? Observables are polynomials. Okay, Pasha, yes. I want to follow your request. Mm -hmm. And your request was not to hurry up, right? Yes. Because <laughs> so I'll do it slowly, okay? Uh -huh. So consider observable p of x. Now <clears throat> there are several questions that we can ask. Is it q plus? Is it q closed? G not minus closed. If A is okay, then maybe it is exact. It was, it was also possible. Point C, maybe it is gravitational descendant. We will uh, answer all these questions slowly in this particular example. Okay, Pasha? Yes. And then, if it turns out to be gravitational descendant, we need to see the following. So there are infinitely many gravitational descendants. So how can I deform this data with the infinitely many times? Hmm? So naive idea, naive idea would be, I say naive because I will correct myself, that that, uh, that I will change W by polynomials of lower degree. That's what people think, thought, in singularity theory. But then what about gravitational descendants? How should I change the theory? So I pose the question and uh, we will answer this question together, okay? So I'll try to show it in the way that you'll be able not only to understand what I'm saying, but to guess. You'll guess it yourself, okay? So you will want to, you want to change W because of what? You will see. Okay. Okay. So, by the way, pre previously when you uh, when you wrote formulas for W like x n plus lower lower degree terms, you 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 often wrote, wrote lower degree terms up to degree n minus two, not n minus one. So why is that? Okay, it's it's a good question. So. You see, I have a board, so I can improve. So here I have W. Here I have omega. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so but before I do this, uh, I will tell you something. So when people do singularity theory, so you asked about why I, why I am. I'll say singularity theory. In singularity theory. People study what? 
people study function up to different morphisms. All right, right, yes. Mm -hmm. So they may say that if I have a function uh, like xm, Ah. So you're saying so that people this the subleading term can uh, be killed uh, by different uh, uh, They started with functions, functions like Excel. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, Excel is something that I don't really like. Let me deform it a bit. Mm -hmm. And here, Pasha, I'll follow your request. Mm -hmm. I, ca I can put here infinity. I can put here very big M. It's the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me put here infinity, and uh, of course the convergence is meant in terms of uh, formal power series here. Mm -hmm. So it's called function of x and t. Then people identify function with function plus L V of f. Mm -hmm. So V is a formal vector field. So So V of X is X to the L, CL, D over DX. And here sum is from L equals zero to plus infinity. And when you apply, and when you make this identification, you may check what can you get. Mm -hmm. And now what about T? T would be also formal. So it means that we are working on the space over the space C formal theory of T. Okay. And it's important. If so, would T uh, belong not to this field, no, no, not here, but be a numbers. I cannot distinguish n. So I am distinguishing n because this so-called time is a number. And, the, and these t's are small, formal, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how n is distinguished here, mm -hmm. okay? So in this business, I, uh, I am asking what, what can I do with this function. And the answer is that I could kill a lot here. So it is a gauge fixing. Uh, you may say, mm -hmm. so there is a representative. Mm. X n plus e k x k sum from k equals zero to n minus two. I think it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. that such a representative exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's why people thought, look, we have something. We have the action of diffeomorphisms. We have uh, representatives, that's it. So it is a moduli space. Mm -hmm. So people thought, and I would say naively, you will see why naively, that we have to consider that the moduli space 
is C polynomial in spectrum, okay. C T zero, T n minus two, okay. And then this was considered the geometrical data of the target space. However, <clears throat> when we study quantum field theory computation, we see, I mean B model, we see that we need extra data. We actually need omega top, okay? And uh, it was actually predicted by Kyoji Saito when he said theory of primitive form. He said, in order to construct what he calls a theory, we need to, to include holomorphic top form. When we discussed type B model, we saw that due to the different number of fermionic zero modes, we also need holomorphic top form. So we have naive moduli space plus choice of the top form. Then the question is <clears throat> how sensitive we are to the choice of this top form. And uh, we know how because We computed the three-point function The result was like this. The holomorphic top form definitely appears here. And if we rescale it, we will have a multiplier by two. Now, could you guess what would you what would we have in higher genera of the world sheet? So what this two actually stands for? So in particular, interesting that in genus one, in genus one, the number of fermionic modes is the same. Yes, yes, of course, it's a, it's a Euler number. Mm -hmm. So when we change omega top, to omega top times lambda. This thing scales like this. Actually, it scales like this. And here, Pasha, I just cannot. I have to quote the paper that we discussed yesterday mm -hmm. about uh, handle gluing operator. Mm -hmm. Where you can see this. Uh, I will discuss handle gluing operator in appendix, okay? I don't want to distract the talk. But Pasha, please note. I mean the Nikrasov Shatashvili paper. Okay. And handle gluing here. So this formula is a formula for, for what? For three-point function on a sphere. Yes. So this is a formula for the three-point function on a sphere. And the, this has to be compared with the Strominger's formula because it was Strominger 
who found it first. So dx is the same as omega top, or sorry? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Because I see it, so of course, omega top means holomorphic top. Mm -hmm. So this is an analog of the formula of Strominger. 1985, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Strominger in 1985 computed the Yukawa coupling in Kalabi-Yao compactification. Okay, st means Strominger. And he found, look, he said, the Yukawa coupling, if we compactify in Kalabi-Yao, is not something arbitrary. They are given by this interesting formula. By the way, at the same, in the same paper, Strominger said that there are another Yukawa coupling that are actually given by quantum cohomology ring. So it was 1985, and Strominger was great to, found, to find this formula in 1985, and that's why I thought he got a Milner Prize, finally. So we had it, mathematical physics had it in 1985. In particular, this formula depends on omega with this type of dependence. And we will, dis and we will discuss this uh, factor later on, okay? Uh, as I will say, in particular, in genus one, you may think that lambda dependence goes away. And then you may think that nothing depends on uh, the choice of omega top, but it would be wrong conclusion as we will see right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so when we study this correlator, we see that we need the, the data W and omega top. Now, you may ask, What does it mean? It means that the naive idea that the moduli space of data, that is the singularity, so-called deformation space of singularity, is not the complete space, right? Because we cannot construct the result using only data of this space. We need top form. Now, interesting question. What would happen if we choose if we change choose another top form? Hmm? It is still possible. Why not to choose another top form? We can multiply it by number. We see the dependence. Now, is it only number that we can use in this multiplication? Uh, yes, right. Answer is no. Let me tell you why. Because here we have formal deformations. Okay? And it means that over the space that is spectrum. That over the spectrum of C T. I have more holomorphic top forms, namely dx plus tx dx. Mm -hmm. And you know what? 
this is the holomorphic to this is non-vanishing top form. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because it's zero is at e is at x not equals minus one over t. Mm -hmm. So it is infinitely far away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Infinitely far away. So, uh, so it means that it has no zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I mean. So, so this theory is uh, not like Calabi Yao manifold in the sense that it has infinitely many holomorphic top forms. Mm -hmm. that, that could be primitive. Once again, the primitive form, it's something that is so what you are decided to call primitive form. It's such a form that dw over dti span equals to cohomology of the operator of this wedge multiplication on the space of differential. Okay. So you consider wedge multiplication by D, DW. So you may call such form primitive. So what do we understand by primitive form? Primitive form is a form that allows you to make odd Fourier transform. Or Primitive form is something that allows you to make BV operator. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pasha, from your reaction, it seems that I need to comment. Yes. Uh, don't 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 tra trace my reactions. I'm very sleepy. No, right. well, wait, no, I, I would trace your reaction. You no, please don't, please don't. So, so what, so what do I mean? Remember that we were talking about BV and we have this BV Laplace. That is something like this. Okay. And we said that these acted on polyvector fields. So this was acting on polyvectors. And this thing was called divergence. Okay. But in order to define divergence, you need a holomorphic top form. Yes. I'm just recalling. To, to understand divergence, you need the holomorphic top form. Because Delta BV on polyvector field inserted into omega top equals to omega so so here so we have this nice formula. So namely, the, namely, there is, so once again, namely, I love people to this way. I explained this, but now it's time to, to explain it again. There are differential forms. There are polyvector forms. 
and there is covariant correspondence between them. You, you say omega is contraction of poly vector field into omega two. So here is a map. I call it odd Fourier transform. Because it's, I call it odd Fourier transform because it is odd Fourier transform. But if you are more, uh, Classical mathematician, you may understand it this way. So in order to make odd Fourier transform, you need a fermionic measure. In this formula, in order to make this correspondence, you need omega top. Now, there is the RAM operator acting here, and there is BV operator acting here. And then this correspondence, they go in one into another. And you may say that this is a definition of delta BV, BV Laplace. It is the image of the RAM under this odd Fourier transform that is this. So mathematicians were lazy to invent this. That's why physicists had to invent this. So it means that we have such a structure. We know that in order to construct I B model of any type, we need delta BV, of course. So it means that we need, of course, omega two. So in order to construct delta BV, we need omega two. Then we need, and then it turns out that we need omega top also in order to construct correlators. So it happens that we, it happens that we missed omega top. From the data. <laughs> So now we will write formulas and see what would depend on omega top, okay? Three point function depends, delta BV depends on omega top. Now, Let us come to the question. Observables, okay? They should be Q closed and G not closed. Okay, let us come to this issue. So what is Q? It's interesting what is Q. So it depends on how are we going to represent observables. If observables are zero star forms times T star zero, okay? Then this Q is definitely D bar. No, sorry. If they are, if here I have uh, this.
plus dw. I am writing it in this representation or in a representation of forms just because, just because I remember it better. However, we may also go to another representation. In another representation, R, not R, R treated as times T star zero. So then Then Q is again D bar. Nothing has changed here. However, this thing is changed. Here is here we have a differential operator. Let me recall you that this is the BB bracket with W. And G not minus is okay. So what are these guys? Consider functions of X. They're holomorphic. And function with, with function has zero uh, BV bracket, right? So all functions go. Now functions have no divergence. Actually, functions do not have thetas. That's why uh, they are annihilated by both Q and G not minus. Okay? So it's easy. Now let us see how can we see the exact functions. Okay. So to see exact functions, we need to act by with Q on something and to get a function, right? And we will call this function exact. What should I put here? To get a function, Pasha, I'm sorry to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I want to apply this Q to something. I want to get a function. Oh, theta times, what times a function. Theta times what? a function. Theta times a function. Yeah. Yes, and what is theta times a function? It's a vector field. Especially if theta is, uh, if there are several thetas. So Pasha says, we need to write down this. Mm -hmm. So theta times the function is, is a vector field. Okay? Mm -hmm. So theta times the function is a vector field. So if we apply here q to the vector field, we get a function. Mm -hmm. And that's how and also this function is nothing but the V derivative of V. So exact functions are nothing but LV of W. It is surprising because we prefer to see what something that acts is here W. Something on what you act is V. But the result is written this way. Okay, so exact functions is exactly what we assume to throw away in the singularity theory, right? Not quite right. Of course, not quite right. Because we know 
that we are not uh, throwing away exact functions. What do we need to check? Hmm? We need to check that Q of OV, yes, is exact. But if you, but if we do it like this, they would not be coupled because Q, because something that is Q exact may not lead to the differential form of the moduli space because they may not be horizontal. Hmm? So abstraction, abstraction to take a quotient is divergence of V, okay? Sorry, I didn't understand this. Well, what are you talking about now? So I, I am talking about exact, exact observables. Yes. Yeah. However, exact observable is not the observable that decouples. Mm -hmm. It decouples only if it's exact and horizontal. Mm -hmm. It means that G not minus should annihilate it. Mm -hmm. So it means that not all vector fields are OK. Mm -hmm. There are some vector fields that do not decouple. Yeah. <clears throat> Let us see which vector fields do not decouple. If the divergence of V is not zero, then then observable O, that is LVW, does not decouple. And this phenomena is just like saying that DA is not exact. Engage theory. Because this A is a one form on the total space of the bundle and not on the base. And we discussed it last time. And uh, I am coming back to this discussion. So it means that it's not enough to factorize with respect to vector fields. We need to factorize with respect to the vector fields they, that have zero divergence. And this is, <clears throat> if you wish, string theory contribution to deformation theory. In singularity theory, people say, we take functions and we factorize by all vector fields. He will say, no, come on. Factorize only with respect to the divergenless vector fields. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then you may ask, what would happen if we if we use the differential, if we use, the, if we still use these observables that are exact, but they do not decouple. Uh, they are interesting. They turn out to be interesting because it is these observables that uh, are Marita Mumford classes, gravitational descendants. On the one hand side, on the other hand side, what if we use diffeomorphisms that do not uh, preserve holomorphic top form? Hmm? So what would be their geometrical meaning? Could you guess? It's easy to guess. 
if you have a uh, observable that changes holomorphic top form, then adding them to the uh, to the action would, would would do what? Would just uh, change the holomorphic top form. So we are changing not the singularity itself. We are changing the pair singularity W and holomorphic top form. So it's a theory of the pairs, W omega, not the theory of W itself. Okay? So that's what I'll go to explain. And as you know, it is a verifiable conjecture, not conjecture, it's a verifiable statement. So once again, if we have an observable O, it's a function. So it is Q closed and G not minus closed. It's okay. So it is, it is uh, observable that is allowed to you. If this O turns out to be LV of W such that divergence of V is not zero. And when I say divergence, I, I put here omega. It would mean that such observable is not exact. So it's not, exact, it's not that does not decouple. Does not decouple. Actually, actually such observable is equivalent to Z times divergence V Well, this is the Marita Malford class. So now, So now what happens if I put, so if I try to deform action with such observables, symbolically, I write functional integral action plus, I write these observables here. I can make diffeomorphism and kill and kill this. However, this diffeomorphism would change. Omega top. That's why these observables deform holomorphic top form. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. And uh, I need to refer to my paper with Palubin because we wrote a paper on this. 
we wrote a paper in 90s, in the early 90s, called uh, Gravitational Descendants as uh, Generators of Diffeomorphisms. So making this diffeomorphism, you are changing the top form. So actually, you change W, then you try to undo this change, you are changing the top form. OK. And uh, before I go to some example, let me make a five minutes break. Because I have to make five minutes break. So, so Misha Schiffman, Misha Schiffman uh, says that when you are talking, when you're talking some short period, uh, you should always have one deep thought that you need to put into the other people's mind. So now, in this part of the talk, I was trying to, to put in, into your mind, mind this thought. Not only superpotential, but holomorphic top form. Holomorphic top form is uh, everywhere. And then, diffeomorphisms actually act. But they are not only changing W, but also holomorphic top form. Hmm? And also, they are gravitational descendants. You may say it's a miracle. It's a matter of fact. Now we have a five minutes break. And we will proceed with example. OK? Pasha, is it OK? Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm.
אוקיי. So, I'm back. So now, let us implement this idea and see how it works with a very explicit example, okay? Of a n singularity. So for the case of A and singularity, let us start, let us see what's going on. Let us consider polynomial of X. Then, so we take W of X. So W of X say is XL. Then we may try to see is it Q exact? So it means, so it is Q exact, of course, if P of X is V DW over DX. So let us see. If P of X is one, etc., X and minus two, it is not Q exact. If P of X is X and minus one, it is Q exact. And what is the vector field? The cube ray image. Pasha, mm. what is the vector field? Mm. So this is proportional to the dw over dx. Yeah. And coefficient of, pro of proportionality is a number. Oh. Well, one less, one, yes. One, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the divergence of this V is zero, All right? So uh, this observable decouples, mm -hmm. okay? Now let us consider P of X equals to X to the power M. Now, X to the power N is X times N, X times N minus one over N. This thing is W prime or W of X. So in this case, V of X equals to X over N. And you know what? Divergence of this V is one over N. So it means that this field is very interesting, important field. It is just Marita Manford class. He is Marita Manford class. Okay, divided over M. Now, x 
n plus 1. equals to what? x squared over n, n x n minus 1. It is, so vector field is x squared over n. So divergence of v is what? 2x n. Mm -hmm. Good. That's why x and n plus 1 is 2n zx. So z is a bookkeeping. Bookmark for Marita Manfer class. And so on. Up to what? When something interesting would happen. Up to x to n minus one. To n minus, let me let me check. Yes, to x minus one. It is because 2x minus 1. Oh, sorry, x to the, no, not 2x minus 1. x to the 2n minus 1, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is equivalent to what? To z times over n. And here I'll have. So let us see how it goes. This equals to what? One over n, n x n minus one. And here I have x n. This is w prime. So this observable, Correspond to the vector field V. So divergence of such vector field equals X L minus one, right? Mm -hmm. So this corresponds to Z times X L minus one. However, x and minus one is a perfectly exact observable. That is equivalent to zero. Maybe the next step is would be x to n. That is that equals to one somewhere again. X to the power n plus one, one minus n, n x n minus one. This is W prime. So it means that V equals two to what? X n plus one over n. So this is this corresponds to z. And here we have divergence of v n plus 1 over n x to the power n. But we already computed x to the power n. x to the power n in each term was equivalent to z, as far as I remember, divided over n. So it is like z squared, like n plus one over n times one. So this is the second descent. 
and so on. So we see here an interesting table. From one, n minus one, n minus one, nothing. Then n to n minus one. So yes, so n to n minus one corresponds to nothing. So, so here we have two n. So here we have n minus two, n minus two, etc. Okay. So 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 uh, I just write you the the structure of observables. We have n minus two observables here. Then we have n minus two observables. So then the, then the n minus one decouples. Then we have n minus two observables corresponding to- I think it's n minus one. I think it's n minus one because it's, it starts from zero probably in the beginning and from n to two n minus two, it's actually n minus one. Right. Right. So here is, here is n minus one that decouples. Here is 2n minus 1 that decouples. So this is the structure of observables. That's why higher power of access correspond to gravitational observable. And this is basically the result of my first paper on the subject, written in 93. So when uh, people were studying relations between gravitational descendants and uh, integrable systems, people uh, for some reason studied only deformations of the lowest degree. And uh, I thought, uh, what if we will study the formation of the highest degree? Because in integrable systems, they corresponded to higher times. And, uh, and that's it. And here we have, uh, in particular, the case that I was, that is very hard to treat properly. It is the case, what if n small would be equal to, to two? Then uh, we will have only gravitational descendants of one and it would be pure gravity. Yes, it is pure gravity. So, uh, are these uh, observables still uh, missed by other people? No. They, uh, so, how to say? Uh, when people write answers, it's okay. Uh, in some sense, I call them uh, gravitational descendants constructed in terms of matter fields. Because you see, they are not constructed by something external, like connections on the modulate spaces. How do we represent the Psi classes? Using connections. They, they have an internal meaning. Moreover, 
What is more important is that if we deform the action using these observables, we would, uh, so it has the meaning. It is the formation of the holomorphic top form. Holomorphic top, top form in the non-compact case is not unique. There are many of them. So uh, what helped me a lot was the paper of Kritschever. So Kritschever uh, di discussed uh, integrable system, this dispersionless integrable system as an evolution of two objects like W and Q. No, not this differential Q. I use his uh, terminology. And once he wrote that uh, he wrote the following thing. Some object that he wrote, that should be a, a dilaton. He wrote it in the form WDQ, as far as I remember. But I immediately found here the dilaton that this is a gravitational descendant, or maybe he wrote like Q did out, or maybe he wrote it like this, Q did out. And I immediately realized that it is, uh, that this is gravitational descendant times DQ. So actually evolution of the holomorphic top form was previously considered by Krishiver. Okay, but nobody put it uh, in this form. Now, we can make some exercises here to see that the formula that I uh, drew last time was working. However, formula that I drew last time was uh, it was a formula with contact terms. I still want to put this formula in front of you because uh, this formula captures several phenomena in one simple example. Okay. Because when I say you, there is a connection defined like this, like this, like this, it's not an example. You need to construct this connection, see how it acts, etc. When I show you the explicit formula, you easily see what is going on. So I, to, I told you that there is such a formula, that there is connection. I wrote it C of W. Now I will write it at C of W and Omega because, because it happens that the theory that has W and Omega. And this is a connection between the local observables that are polyvector fields. In our case, there are functions. What you have to do? And here I need to explain what I mean.
I don't know. Let me call it site or hodge, hodge site, okay. So I propose this formula. So what is written here? We have the four, so we have omega and W. Oh, sorry, it's between P1 and P2. We need to multiply pi one times p two times omega. Then we need to take Hodge site representative of this class. Hodge site representative of this class it seems to be not seems not to depend on omega. It depends only on w. And if you wish, W bar. This thing is homotopy, once again. This thing is uh, G naught minus. So this is kind of universal formula. What is homotopy? What is G naught minus? Hmm. Where in this formula? So, so there are two representations. A representation by polyvector fields and by differential forms. Hmm. In representations by differential forms, the external differential was multiplication by DW. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, division, I see. So, if, if from the product we take uh, a representative, mm -hmm. it, will, it will be zero in cohomology. Mm -hmm. So it will be divisible by the W. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I see. So division is taking, taking the homotopy. Yes, and now, so we have this formula. And now we can make various choices. One of the cho choices or exercise is, so what if omega is dx? And if the theta of, cl of classes dx, x n minus 2 dx is span dx x n i n minus 2 dx. So this is a non-trivial statement. So when people uh, don't see a statement here, they, uh, they were missing the point. Because here I label this dx, xn minus 2 dx, just uh, as, as some labels, just to tell you what I'm talking about. And on the right, I, I wrote the exact representatives. You may ask what could be here, and I will tell you what could be here. Why this? is non-trivial. Let me give you an example when I say that, that shows that something non-trivial is cooking here, okay? I would say these classes in DW in cohomology
So, I mean this. So by this, dx, etc., I mean classes in DW cohomology. And here I mean the representatives of classes in ZD plus DW cohomology. Example. Suppose I have W equals x1 to the power 4 plus x2 to the power 4. OK? Mm -hmm. I can write the same game. As an omega, let me take this. One second. One second, I need to think. Mm -hmm. And I have different interesting classes. So let me check the classes in degree four. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have class like this. Now, what about x1 to the power 4? x1 to the power 4 is what? It is x1 d over dx1 applied to w. So the vector field is x1 d over dx1. The divergence of the field x1 d over dx1 is 1. So x1 to the, po to the power 4 is equivalent to z times 1. OK? x2 to the power 4 is also equivalent to the z times 1. Now, Now I have a question. Consider element namely consider this class in the double cohomology. It has degree four. How to represent it? In Z D plus D double cohomology. So what should be a section of this table? I have many choices. Sorry, so here I have dx dx. So I have many choices. I have one choice. Plus, I have this one. with some coefficient alpha plus I have this one. So the question is that for any alpha in beta, the projection to the double cohomology is the same. It's clear. 
I don't see a priori any way to pick up this one, the product representative, except, except I know that the theory is the sum of two Ws, okay? But then what would happen if I deform W? So if I deform W like this, how can I choose the proper representative? You see here I also have gamma x1 to the x2 square dx1 dx2. Okay. So the question is how to determine alpha and beta. The argument that it is a product is not valid anymore. The argument of the degree, this is a fourth degree, this is a fourth degree, this is a fourth degree. Such singularity, you know how you know that this singularity has a name. This singularity is called is called unimodular singularity. to choose this section. So, you know what, the, what distinguishes Kyoji Saita and people who understand him from the rest of the world? That these people understand that in order to write down something, you need to make this choice, okay? And, the, and the, there is a... putting here alpha and beta, all your formulas would have no meaning. So that's why Kyoji Saita uh, tells about people, he understands primitive theory of primitive form and he does not understand. So people who just do not understand that there is a problem, people who say, ah, To see that there is a problem, you need to see quietly on what is going on. You need to see that you need to make this, uh, you need to pick up this connection. So first people think that uh, you just do not need to write down any connection, any contact terms. Okay, then people say, oh, let us play take plus. So plus formulas means that you divide and take the lowest degree works only in, in the cases that are called ADE, in the simplest possible cases. Here there is this ambiguity and this is ambiguity. Um, uh, Andre, I, I, I don't see video from you somehow, or it's, it stopped updating uh, some minutes ago. No video? Oh, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing the stationary picture from several minutes ago. Ah. I so you don't see me, mo right me moving, yes? No. But you hear my sound? Yes. You know, it's interesting how this could uh, happen because they come from the, from the same source. One second, 
Thank you, Pasha. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Sam, do you see your video from me? Uh, no. Uh, well, I think I mean, not picture, but my head moving. Let me see. Ah, and I think I see. I see this. Ah, A Zoom meeting is hanging. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have to, Pasha, if you hear me, I, yes. I have to reload. Okay. So it is a Zoom uh, glitch. Mm -hmm. Do you see me? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so the, so there is something that prevents me to explain this peculiar feature of Kyoji Saito theory. So the most peculiar feature is the section of this class in DW cohomology. So I may also rewrite this formula as P1, P2, omega minus section Hodge Saita. So let divided by Z. It is equivalent. Like this. I need to divide over over the top form. So this is Kyoji Saito's formula. Without this section term, without this section term. This was so-called Gauss-Malin connection. With this section term, it's exactly what we have to study. This modified connection, Kyoji Saita in his papers, if you look at his papers, denoted like this. He called it Nabla Slam. However, since he is Japanese, he cannot pronounce the letter L. And if you see his, hear his talk, he calls it Nabla Shram. 
So, and this looks like a shrub in Nablo. So that's why it's easy to remember. Okay? So he defined this connection. And it is non-trivial. I mean, choice of this section is non-trivial because here, here you, can, you typically go away from the span region and you need to pick up what you subtract. And silly people thought that it is so obvious that you need to subtract lower degrees Not understanding that the degree completely fails in this uh, unimodular case. And uh, this is one of the regions uh, why QOG cyta theory stopped a bit in computation when you come to these higher singularities. Because when you study this, when you study these formulas, you need to integrate it. Contact term is just two point. It is just what happens in the first order. Then you need to compute, compute in the higher order. And by the way, if it happens, that you have terms not uh, in the no not of the lower orders. You need to make diffeomorphisms. So it is a quite complicated system of equations. So still, I need to show you something. I mean here. So I hope you see that this is not trivial. Yes. So this element with alpha is equivalent to alpha dx minus two. And to pick up wrong alpha and beta, having z here, you divide here, you have some, you have some numbers and you have no control of these numbers. So when you change alpha and beta here, you immediately change contact terms, you change the result. And the choice of this alpha and beta is what people are calling uh, TT star anomaly, actually T star anomaly. Anomaly or arbitrariness is in choice of this alpha, alpha and beta. And if you talk to QOG Saita, he will tell you that he invented what? He invented higher residue pairing to restrict this alpha and beta. And he restricted it a bit by the condition that higher residue vanishes on good sections. However, it, it does not restrict you completely and you still have arbitrariness. And I interpret this arbitrariness as a T star condition. So let's go back here for this as times in and reduced uh, uh, KP Kyra. that there are some times that, that are missing. Okay, I'll talk about hierarchies later. I just want to mention. Pasha, it seems that I, I am frozen again. Yeah, there's something going on with sound and uh, with video. I'm sorry, I need to, I, I think I need to re reload computer. Mm -hmm. I, so, okay.
sorry, short break, three minute break for reloading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry.
Okay, I hope I am back. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Pasha, is my uh, video smooth now? Yes, yes, everything good. Everything good. Okay. Now. Now, after I explain the general structures, general structure, let me proceed with example. So still, my, my example still would be a n, of course. So, I want to know how to compute this. Contact term between x to the power n1 and n2, okay, k1 and k2, with superpotential x to the n and uh, form dx. minus minus something. So how can I find this minus? I would say I would put here L. So L would mean lower degree representative. So XK L equals XK if K is less than N minus two. And this zero otherwise. Because this is the image of good section. Then I want to divide it by, by dw and take d. <clears throat> now, How can I write it in a simpler form? I can write it like this. Minus. So I can divide, but but when I write down W, when I write the, down minus, it means that I am ignoring negative powers. Okay. So then it means that I am writing it as D, and here I have. x k1 x k2 over dw plus it means 
that I'm taking into account only positive powers. And this is actually a QG Saita connection. Now you, you may compute, so, so having this, you may compute uh, examples of correlators. Now let me tell you the general recipe, how to compute. Oh, I told you how to compute this one. Plus the, plus the last term. Now, you see this formula could be applied not only for the simple singularity case, it's a universal formula. This is just a one dimensional example. Now, what would happen if I would like to have here higher ties? If, if I'd like to have k bigger than n, I can still use this formula and then make a diffeomorphism. So when I will make a diffeomorphism, the omega would change, okay? So let us compute the following correlator. VI, DIW, P1, P2, P3. So what should I do? I should change the super potential by this. And also I need to consider the contact terms. Okay. So when I am changing super potential, I will have P1, P2, P3, W plus LV, W omega. Then I can make diffeomorphism. And I will see that this corresponds to what? L 
LV P1, LV P2, LV P1. Oh, so I can do the, I can make diffeomorphism, and that would correspond to, diff, to taking diffeomorphism to P1, P2, P3, and also to omega. It's one piece. Another piece is the contact terms. So here, so it is clear what to ha what happens here. You are just doing this diffeomorphisms. What happens when you do the contact term? Vi diw times p. So I need to divide by z. I can always divide it by z. In order to divide it by z, I need to say that this is equivalent to divergence of the vector field times p and here I'm divided and here I already divided by z. Well, this is divergence of the vector field times p plus vi di p. So what I see, I see that contact terms correspond to LV of P plus divergence of the vector field times P. So, uh, so Lie derivative of uh, P's coming from the contact term together with the Lie derivative of P4 together with the Lie derivative of W standing here allows me to take all this Lie derivative out and to hit omega and to get as a result, P1, P2, P3, plus contact terms, so basically that's how it goes. Okay, so I outlined the, I, uh, I outlined the computation and I am ready to do this computation with anyone who would be interested in studying this. And I'll definitely do this computation uh, tomorrow on Friday. That was devoted to integrable systems. Because I think Dong, uh, should be interested because, because at least Dong asked me about uh, what is the PQ system, what happens with higher times, etc. So that's what happens with higher times. So, and people who are not interested in such details may see that uh, things are computable. And when he or she would be interested, he or she could uh, do it themselves or ask me. While well, now, I want to cover the third piece of, of what I explained. It's called the tensor product.
So before I before I go to tell the product, I'd like to say that for a n computation are quite simple. You start with axis, then in the contact term, you actually divide it, divides by x to the n, and, you, and the power go, goes down. And when you iterate, uh, you will see that uh, after uh, several steps, there, there is nothing to, to iterate anymore. So it basically means that for a L, correlator of P1, PK, so for K, roughly speaking, greater than L, is zero if degrees of P's are less than L. And I'll assume this. So it means that the generating function for such correlator is a polynomial. So it corresponds to polynomial solution to W. However, if I consider theory with superpotential like this, then this statement is not true anymore. I can go on and on and on, and I can consider more and more complicated correlators. And it's not an elementary function. The generating function is not an elementary function. And it's basically because I have fields like x1 square, x2 square, that have the same degree as w. So roughly speaking, p square over dwd has the same degree as uh, as p. So in contact terms, I'm getting uh, terms of the same type. So here I have uh, infinitely many correlators. However, you see that I have two decoupled systems. I may formally think that I have fields x1 and I have fields x2. So the question is what is going on? And, and it is because I know that on the level of quantum field theory, I have a product of two systems. So energy momentum tensor total is T1 plus T2. Q total is Q1 plus Q2. So having each of these two systems, I can construct a uh, element of cohomology of the moduli space. And then I can multiply these elements and I get non-trivial result. So here we are coming to the Kansevich Manin tensor product. Suppose we have a map HP 
to the cohomology of M of actually M G P compactified. Sorry, to differential forms. See, I said cohomology, let it be map to differential forms. And I call this theory one. I have similar thing in theory two. Now, I have the product theory. Product theory means that cohomology of the, I would say, one times two is a tender space of cohomology. Now the map. Theory one times two is a map. from H1 times H2 to the power P. So, so it takes this by the theory one, which theory two. So I multiply them as a differential forms on, on, on the modulus space. And after I do this, and, and, and then I can integrate so I, so I multiply them and then I integrate over the modular space. And I have numbers. So there is such an operation. Now, what is interesting? What I'd like to say, how to implement this operation in practice? Okay, since we are not going in practice, count these differential forms as differential forms. We would like to get them as classes on cohomology. So of course, in doing this in practical, we are using the Kuhnert theorem. Kuhnert theorem. Namely, in order to practically implement this formula, we need to know the structure of uh, cohomology of MGM. So actually, we need to know this ring. Need this ring. So what else do we need from this ring? So I don't know for G, but what is important that for M zero N, for M zero N, this ring is uh, understandable. Cohomology of M zero N is understandable. What do I mean understandable? To compute it, I need to know the generators of this ring. Generators and intersections.
is generated by boundary divisors. So what do I mean by boundary device? In particular, M0. So boundary divisors such classes where we have uh, two decoupled spheres. So these are generators. However, what is interesting is that there are relations What do I mean by relations? The simplest relation is the fact that uh, M04 is connected to this class is equal to 1, 3, 2, 4. So it is the simplest relation. However, there are more complicated relations. So more complicated relations are like this. One, two, three, four, five, plus. One, two, five, three, four. I'm adding the fifth point here. Equivalent to, so what I interchange? Two and three. Look, what I wrote here is nothing but a relation between generators. Okay. What is interesting is how to consider multiplication. Okay. So if I'd like to study tensor product, I need to multiply cohomology. Okay. So how to multiply delta on devices? And that's interesting that in order to do this, to multiply the delta on divisors. So just imagine that I need to multiply, intersect this divisor with itself, okay? It will be a problem. But I can use such relation to intersect it with something that transversely intersect with it. So uh, here I just make you an announcement that it is very simple and constructible algebra. It is doable. And what is important? It is important that it is possible to have explicit description of the gromov witten invariant of the tensor system using this tensor product algebra. I told you why this is non-trivial. It is non-trivial because there are a relatively simple system like AN and complicated system. And you may think that when you will do computations in complicated system, it is uh, hard. You need to make a lot of computations. You need to do something. However, it turns out that there is a universal algebra that does it for you.
So, actually, in this way, you can uh, get the elliptic formulas of these elliptic singularities from simple singularities. And this is something that uh, QHS Saita is not aware of. He described only, so he, say, he thought that you have to do this theory piece by piece. But there is a standard tool that will do the job for you. So if you know a lot of this algebra, you can compute uh, higher singularities from lower singularities. And this is amazing. You see, while this is amazing, not so many people did it. Yeah. So uh, the, the only person whom I know who did it after Kansevich Manin was Mian Palubin, who studied Kyoji Saito theory with respect to this tensor product. I have a question. So, uh, yes. if you study the singularity, you will consider the deformation of it. Uh, so if if uh, if it is a uh, e two or e r uh, e r type singularity, uh, it is just uh, the direct direct sum of two a n type. But uh, exactly. if you study the deformation, there was some mixed uh, mixed term between the two variables. Of course, so, of course mixed, of course mixed, because yeah. the deformation be belongs to cohomology and cohomology is a tensor product. Yeah. So if you have X, if you have, ah, X1 to N1 plus X2 to N2, there'll be interesting deformation of this type. Yes. So, these are uh, observables that I have to take into account, but they're tensor product of observables. Mm -hmm. So I can compute them in the framework of tensor product of the theory uh -huh. in a very efficient way. So one can, one can if one wish, put it on the computer, okay, okay and okay. study. So uh, we with Palubin, so it's, a, it's the second time when I mentioned his name, but I need to put him on the board. So we studied this uh, with respect to, to lots of mining spaces and uh, moduli spaces. So actually, this tensor product could be studied well. I'm sorry to say, but there is lots of mining spaces. It's a point so on C star. This is C star to the power N over C star compactified. So we studied that as them for LM. Here you also have very explicit tensor algebra. You can also compute cohomology relations, everything. Then, solution here satisfy equation. Then,
because tau is, an, is interpreted as vector space to the power m into endomorphism of some space w okay and here we consider the sum so it's a collection of such maps okay actually times cohomology of loss of minus spaces so this is tau using the product structure here you can uh, find you can construct the tensor product on solution to this equation so of course you have pair v1 w1 v2 w2 so m all linear data acts as a product So one can construct tensor product here. Then, second, there is something that we call reconstruction. Theory, procedure. Reconstruction procedure is There are special coordinates T that take the form of tau multiplied to some H, some vector of W. In coordinates T, commutativity equation. turns out to be equal to the oriented associativity. It's associative product. This is related to Delaney Mumford. So this is related to the Manford commodification. And here we have tensor product. So what we started to check is that tensor product on LM spaces on lots of mining and tensor product on uh, the Lin Manford space is uh, compatible with uh, with this reconstruction procedure so that there is a commutative diagram okay it's a conjecture because we checked lowest cases let me call it watch of polygon conjecture the following diagram is commutative Suppose we have a pair. From this pair, we can get solutions to commutativity equation. Okay, I will not write it uh, in this formal term because, okay, uh, it will not tell or give you any additional information. Just, I would say it in words that our conjecture is 
Z. Tensor product over logic margin space. And reconstruction procedure. are uh, compatible. So you can either take the product of a loss of money of space and then take reconstruction procedure of the product, or you could make reconstruction procedure first and then take the tensor product. Okay, so this is only for people who are actually interested. For them, I can tell the details. I am mentioning it just to tell you that this tensor product structure works not only effectively, works not only on M0N, on drain Mumford space, but also on lots of planning spaces. That is simpler. And uh, let me show you another example of, uh, the, of, of the problem where uh, tensor product is very effective. Namely, consider gromov witten invariance of CP1 times CP1. This is already a very non-trivial question. Non-trivial numbers. So original uh, effectiveness of gram of Witten works for CP2, but, uh, but you may see that CP1 times CP1 is also almost as, com as complicated as CP2. It's about the curves that are passing through points. But there's something uh, quite non-trivial. So how many curves of by degree go through the set of points? However, gram of Witten invariance or theory on CP1 is simple. It is because, uh, so in genus zero, it is simple. There is only one non-trivial correlator. That's, uh, that's isomorphism. So there is a map to a point and the only one non-trivial correlator that takes three marked points into three marked points. Actually, all correlators for CP1 are the following. You have classes of points And you have fundamental class. No, you, you, you have classes of points, yes. So this is simple. It gives you Q. Basically, that's it. So simple theory. So, so what you can uh, have here, you can say that uh, you can decompose this Q as E to the, to the time corresponding to the Keller class. And you can take derivatives. So you see very simple correlators. So it's very simple thing. This is non-trivial. How to get non-trivial from the simple? It turns out that you can get it from the tensor product. Because theory in CP1 times CP1 is a tensor product of such, the of such simple theory. And here, I need to say, look, maybe this is what motifs are all about. 
that uh, so-called uh, topological, so when we do topological string, topological theories, we need to go to the simplest possible theories. And then tensor product them. But uh, if you go to CP1, then what you will get out of this, if you take tether product, would be just CP1 and CP1 and CP1. But you would like to get something else. So the good question is, what are the simplest elementary blocks that you have to, stu that you have to study such that all other theories would come out as a tensor product of them? So these elementary blocks, we would like to call motifs, okay? So people were dreaming about motifs, uh, studying, uh, studying uh, Hodge structures on cohomology. So here we come again to the issue of motif. So maybe there is a simpler solution to WDVV equations. And this should be called motif. So is it possible? So I'm asking questions. Is it possible to construct a building blocks here such that other theories would come as a tensor product and the formation of the tensor product? Okay, so uh, typically, mostly, I uh, conclude my talk by a conjecture. Now I am even more, how to say, unconcrete. I am not concluding by conjecture. I am concluding it by a question. What is I would say, Grom of Witten or string theory motif. What is the simplest theory or set of theories from which you can construct all the rest by taking tensor products? So for singularity theory, it is AN. We know it. That all singularities could be embedded there. But it is only for singularity theory. So my question is, what is the general situation? And how this is related to the idea of motifs in the growth and dig program on study of algebraic geometry? OK, so after my question, I would say my conjecture is that these two things are the same. Ah, still, I end with conjecture. So you cannot do everything only from topological gravity. It's a piece of the game, but what else should you include? Okay, so it's, that's it for today. So that's, that's a, <clears throat> so, so tomorrow, so tomorrow uh, in the morning, we would concentrate on integrable systems uh, in detail. Hamiltonians, uh, times, uh, all that. So presumably that's a duality, duality between uh, Calabi-Yau and uh, lambda principle. So you have such a structure for singularity theory. There should be a similar structure for gram -weighted. There should be some orbifolds in the game. Yes. Because in singularity, so you should consider <coughs> not only singularity theory. In singularity theory, you have lower monomials. Mm -hmm. uh, to get Calabi-Yau, you need to do the following. First, you need to uh, allow only monomials of the degree of like W. It's one thing. Another thing that in Calabi-Yau cases, you need to study high cohomology. But uh, still, uh, in reply to your question, Sam, in reply to your question, I still hope that when we factorize 
to get the proper cohomology will get a twisted sector that would correspond to higher cohomology. Mm -hmm. Yes. But let me tell you what. Let me tell you something. I also read the Edward Wheaton's paper. Okay. Yes. We we all were reading it. So Edward Wheaton's paper was equivalent on the level of Jacobian rings. What I am just telling you right now is this, that just Jacobian ring is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need to consider this equivalent cohomology. You need to consider the top forms. Yes. And only then you can get proper equivalences. So uh, this thing is missed in Edward's written paper. So if it is missed, we need to put it, we need to put it there. Hmm. So once again, not only Jacobian ring, so-called singularity theory of Landau Ginsburg has more than Jacobian ring in it. Hmm. This is the message. Uh, even for the closed sector. Even for the closed sector. Yes. Right. So people like Wafa see it when they see, ah, TT, TT star anomaly, or no modular invariance, or something. But uh, one should not study the consequences of phenomena. We have to study phenomena itself and then derive consequence. Okay. And uh, the phenomenon is that theory depends on the top form. And when we study deformation, top form could and should be deformed. Because the action of diffeomorphisms is not trivial. Yes. Diffeomorphisms lead to gravitational descendants. We need to take this into account. Yes. Okay. By the way, Shelley started doing this. He says, look, gravitational descendants correspond to higher vertices, higher vertices. That's not something that we started with Shadrin. But it's just the tip. It's just the beginning. It was kind of computational argument. If it will be possible to join the argument that I give today with that argument, we will understand more about the structure of the about the target space structure of the B model. So world sheet structure is about this Marita Manford classes, while target space structure it's about diffeomorphisms, uh, top form, etc. And we have nice interplay between these two structures. So basically, all my life, I am studying this interplay, OK? Between the world fit structure, that is called string theory effects, and target space structure. So you are, not, you are also not include the open sector yet? Of course not. But we discussed with Dong. Yes how to do this mm -hmm. but it's but it's a special topic okay so don't tomorrow we will discuss integrable systems right well yes yes so we finally see that this this gravitational descendants in this comes manning is 
uh, kind of related to this reduced KP hierarchy, right? Yes, you, you already. I, I hope that you see that already. Here we see this uh, uh, these times. Okay, how they are meeting. Okay, but then, but then there will be more, more formulas with pluses, Hamiltonians, etc. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready for it, so it's okay. Uh, please, please, okay. Rec please record it and uh, send it to to my to my father if if possible. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm. yeah.